So you're thinking about buying a new home here in Escondido and you're thinking about new construction because you just can't get your offer accepted because there are so many buyers in this market. Well, today we're going to be talking about all the new construction happening in Escondido and we're getting after it right now. What's up, amazing people? I am Lizzie Four here with the Mortgage List team located out of San Diego, California. And if this is the first time to my channel and you're looking for a channel talking about everything of what it's like to eat, live, sleep, and play here in San Diego, then this is the channel for you. You definitely want to click that subscribe button and tap that little bell so you're reminded every single time we release a new video because honestly, we do it every single week. My team and I are receiving phone calls every single day with people just like you thinking about making that move to somewhere in San Diego, whether it's here in Escondido, down the street in Valley Center, or somewhere in San Diego County. And if you're thinking about making that move, you definitely want to reach out to us. Give us a call, send us a text, or an email, whatever is easiest for you. You definitely want to reach out to us because we got your back when moving to San Diego. Now, let's get after the new construction happening here in Escondido. Let's do it. Okay, so first of all, the new construction that we're going to be talking about today is going to be Eden Crest. Eden Crest is actually located off of El Norte Parkway. And it's on the, per se, the east side of Escondido. You're going to be finding this more so close to like Valley Center before you go up the grade to Valley Center. And we're going to be sharing the map in just a little bit. But wanted to give you a little bit of insight. They're making two different communities there in Eden Crest. So in the Eden Crest community, they're going to be having the Arbors, which is the first community that they're actually building up, which is one stories. So with the one stories, they're going to be making a total of 57 homes that are single level homes. And then they're also going to have a second community that's going to be two stories. And within the two stories, they're going to be totaling up a total of 95 new homes here located on El Norte. And the two story communities are going to be 38 of them are going to be made and there's going to be the groves. So when we're looking at the map, we're going to be able to see kind of more land just because they haven't really built up a lot. There are still in the beginning phases. But don't get me wrong, when it comes to new construction, you're going to find that they're going to sell probably even faster and they're going to have a waiting list to be able to get into those new construction homes. So you want to make sure that if you are interested in those types of homes, you want to just get in real quick because one thing that you will find in phase one, it'll be less expensive than in phase two because as the phases start progressing, prices start increasing just like anything else when it comes to homes that are currently being sold on the market when they end up going over list price. So we're going to be diving into the map perspective so that way you can actually see what it's going to be like to be living in this community for Eden Crest, whether it's going to be the Arbors or it's going to be the Groves community. At least this way you can actually see kind of where it is and about of the schools, plus the fact the different, um, you know, Ralphs or Vons, um, how far the markets are going to be. And then, of course, how far you are from the softball field and the movies. Here we are looking at Escondido. So this is actually the Escondido map showing you a little bit more of the city. You'll notice that the city in itself is pretty large. I mean, like going down the bottom, we do actually carry about 151,000 people here in Escondido. Um, we have over 50 different schools here in Escondido, 39 public with 11 that are private and along with a lot that are actually at home. So within this community for Eden Crest, you're going to be connecting to a couple of schools for the elementary, then your middle school, and then of course your high school. It won't allow you to go into two different schools for Aww. let's say just the elementary or two different schools for the middle. You'll end up having to request an intradistic transfer or a transfer out of that school to be able to um, get your school of choice is what it's talked about or uh, spoken about here in Escondido. So where is Eden Crest anyway? So let's dive in on the map and actually start looking at a little bit closer as to where you're actually going to find Eden Crest specifically. When we get a little bit closer, you're going to find that Eden Crest is actually located kind of on the far side over here on East Groves. This right here is East Valley Parkway. You'll notice that I talk about East Valley Parkway a lot um, here on my videos because East Valley Parkway will actually take you all the way over here to Del Dios Highway, Lake Hodges, and then it will take you as far as over here in Rancho Santa Fe. So when we start looking at the map, like I said, Escondido is pretty large. So you're going to find Eden Crest specifically, you're going to find it on the east side of Escondido. Moving just a little bit farther over here is where you're going to find Eden Crest. And we start looking at El Norte as we were just talking about here. 
El Norte is actually right on the corner to be able to go up here to Valley Center. So we move straight up here. It is definitely a drive here moving all the way up and you're gonna find Valley Center all the way at the top. It's gonna to take you right about 10 minutes just to get up the hill over to Valley Center. So when we are here right on the border, you're gonna find a couple different schools. Right here, you're gonna find Valley High School, which is here right across the street from Ryan Park. Moving over down the street when you go here, that's actually where you're gonna be finding Eden Crest community. And just a second ago, I was talking about how the fact that you could maybe end up in two different schools. Well, the oh. only way that you could end up in two different schools per se, in this case, like let's say elementary schools, the Aiden Crest community actually goes to Glenview, which is here. And then Orange Glen Elementary is right over here. So they're actually pretty close within distance. I mean, like less than five minutes apart. Um, but the community, because it's actually where it is here. So you'll notice that on the map, it actually says that there was a nursery. Well, this was used to be actually an avocado field where it used to be located. That's actually not the case anymore. Oh. And so now you're finding the Eden Crest community actually right here. Again, you'll notice that the Eden Crest community is actually again located on that El Norte East Lincoln Park. You'll find that that's actually the same spot that we were just looking at when it came to the avocado groves, which was right over here. So it's one of those things that you um, wanna see where the homes were before, but they took down all those avocado groves oh. and now they're making those 95 homes that are going to be living there. One of the biggest, per se, I would say cons that you're gonna run into is that El Norte in itself is a really busy street. The benefit though, that you start thinking about when even though El Norte is actually pretty busy, is that when you go up here, you're gonna find the homes at the top over here. And when you find those homes, they're gonna be further in. So you're not gonna to have to deal with the traffic as much just because they're, the homes are kind of like sitting off El Norte Parkway, not right on the street where it is a, a bit busier. Eden Crest community is right here, but let's see how long it's gonna take you to get there from the freeway. So one of the things that you wanna be aware of is that Escondido is a really large city. So, but when the thing is that you have to realize is that to get to this side of town, it's gonna take you a good 15 to 20 minutes just to get to Eden Crest. The other way that you can come in from is coming in from Valley Center, but Valley Center is gonna be kind of, if you're coming down from Temecula, you'll go the back route from there. Okay, so when I'm talking about the back road of, let's say going through the back side of Valley Center, you're gonna be looking at this way. So you're gonna be going down the line over here on El Norte Parkway, up the road to Valley Center, right over here, it's going to be taking you to the top of the hill, which is right here um, in Valley Center. And then of course down here, which is where you're gonna find that fire station, you're gonna to have to take Lilac all the way around to be able to get over there. And then to get to Old Castle, which is right here on this side of the road. Old Castle is actually what's gonna take you over to the other side of what I was referring to, which is going to be the Temecula area. So that's how you end up all the way over here in the 15. So that is the other way of getting back and to um, Eden Crest if you want to go the back route. Um, depending on where you're coming from, whether it's actually um, from your work in Temecula, this wouldn't be that big a deal. It just depends on the time that you're coming from, whether you're going to be hitting a lot of traffic and then you're kind of debating whether you don't want to take just the 15 freeway to be able to get back to your home. I know that this may seem like a big deal. It may not take you as long though. And depending on where you're working, this route may be the easiest way to go when you want to get back to your home, which is right here for Eden Crest. Now let's look at what if you were coming from the 15 freeway. So where is the 15 freeway? Okay, so when it comes to San Diego, you're gonna end up having pretty much like two freeways next to Escondido specifically. And that's gonna be the 15 that's right here. And then this way, which is gonna be the 78. Those are really gonna be the, the main freeways that you run into. So when we're trying to get to the Eden Crest community, you're gonna have to either, if you're coming from San Marcos, which is right over here in this area, you're gonna be taking the 78 over here to get to the 15. This is where it gets kind of loop-de-loop -loop, and then there's a lot of different directions that you can go. You can go up this way and you can go to, let's say Riverside County, Temecula, Menifee, Marietta, um, or you can come down this way and start going down and try to get as far as Chula Vista, San Isidro, and things like that. But if you're trying to get to the Eden Crest community and you're coming from San Marcos, you're gonna be coming this direction right here. Um, and then you're gonna be coming right over here. You're gonna be getting off the 78, the 15, the connector, this 78 actually stops and it actually changes over to East Lincoln, which is actually what you see here. Um, so you'll notice that the there's additional roads coming this way, North Broadway, East Washington, 
But the easiest way to get from the um, freeway, which is right over here at the 78, or the 15 that's right here is just going to be taken down 78. So the 78 will end right here where we used to have Saturn of Escondido. That's no longer there. Now we have Toyota of Escondido that's actually located right there. And there's also a market and you're going to be finding the market that's going to be like right here on the corner. And on that market, it actually is a more of a specialty for like a Mexican spot where you end up getting a lot of good spices, but that's going to be right on the corner right here where it's going to be located right next to a Starbucks, which is in like that same complex. So once again, we're trying to move down here. We're going into East Lincoln. This is going to take you down over to El Norte um, and moving all the way down to what we were talking about, which used to be the nursery where the avocados were at. This is actually now where the homes are for Eden Crest. They are actually right before the entrance that you're going to find right over here. That's going to be able to take you over here to Dixon Lake. Dixon Lake is actually something that you're going to end up being able to have a lot of Easter parties or have a lot of, you know, barbecues. That's also where you're going to be able to do some trout fishing as well. They do have a trout derby every single year. Um, we haven't had one this last year because of COVID. However, we have taken our kids there and it is a lot of fun because then there's a guarantee that they're going to actually end up getting um, a fish because it's it's kind of like a, um, a trout pool and they just stick a whole bunch of trout in there and then they can automatically grab onto one for sure. So it's actually a lot of fun and that's actually what you'll find up here. You will find though that because this is up at the top over here where the technical nursery used to be and now that's where the Eden Crest is, that you may end up having to pay flood insurance. Hmm. I have found that some of the homes that are actually located in this area right over here actually do end up having flood insurance required. Uh. And then even homes that are located right over here in this area also end up having flood insurance required. So what is flood insurance? Well, because of the Dixon Lake that's located right here, if it ever overflows, it could technically go down um, into the homes that are right over here. Has that ever happened? In my history, I don't know of it ever happening. And so with that being said, it is still a possibility because oh. Dixon Lake is pretty massive. It is a beautiful lake, but it also has comes with its cons because now you're going down to the bottom and you're going to have to pay flood insurance for your home being on the bottom of um, Dixon Lake. So how much is flood insurance that you can anticipate? Well, flood insurance is a, a couple thousand dollars. You're gonna be looking at about two to $3,000 for flood insurance and that's an additional cost on a monthly payment that you're going to end up paying for. And so because you have Eden Crest right here, odds are you may have to have again flood insurance because of the closeness between Dixon Lake and actually where Eden Crest is as well. So Eden Crest community, like we were talking about, is located right in the middle. So it's right off of East Lincoln, right off of El Norte Parkway. El Norte Parkway will also take you to the freeway as well that we were just showing. So it kind of gives you a different perspective as to where it's actually located. Okay, so now let's look at where the schools are actually located in comparison to Eden Crest. You're actually gonna be kind of amazed because when you look at the schools, they're actually really close. So the first one that we're gonna be looking at is gonna be the elementary school. So the elementary school that we're gonna be finding is gonna be Glenview. So Glenview, you'll notice is actually really close and actually even within walking distance over to Glenview. Depending on where and how far your home is in this Eden Crest community, the homes are going to be over 95 of them. So you're going to find a lot of the homes coming up this direction. And then when you do that, though, it may take you a little bit longer to get to school when it comes to elementary school. However, you'll notice that there are actually some homes that are right here on the corner. So if that's the case, you may actually end up even being able to walk to the school because it is truly that close when you come this way down East Lincoln and go kind of through the back road. The other way that you may end up going is just going down this way over to East Mission. We'll get back on El Norte and depending on the time that you end up leaving this actually may be the better route depending on actually which part of getting into the school is a little bit busier than the other one because there is actually only two ways to get into the school and so when you come down you can either come down this way or you can come back the route way this way of course you can always go down east lincoln this way and then come down midway and then come back around this way this of course will take you a little bit longer but this is going to be that shortcut that you're going to be looking into just to get into glenview when we go a little bit closer though you're going to find like i said there is only two ways of getting into the school right down this way and then of course up down this way you will find that when you go into north midway down this direction to that school 
you're gonna find the extra grocery spots that you're gonna want to go to. And that's actually gonna be over in the middle where Ralph's and Vaughn's um, are gonna be located right over here on East Valley Parkway. And of course, you're even gonna find this Chinese spot here, um, the Bamboo House, which is actually a pretty good spot for Chinese food, which is actually pretty close to Eden Crest as well. I mean, like you're talking like less than about a five minute drive. So when we go back to East Mission, you're looking at uh, Glenview right here and then moving down this direction. For Glenview specifically, it's going to be grades one to five. I'm pretty sure they actually even have a preschool program there as well. You'll have to definitely comment down below if you know the answer to that question but I think they do have a preschool program. There is two preschool programs here in Escondido. So just gives you a little bit more of an insight there as well. So now let's look at middle schools. Middle schools, you're gonna end up finding that the one that it's connected to for Eden Crest is gonna be Hidden Valley Middle School. Hidden Valley Middle School is a little bit farther than uh, what Glenview is. So of course, in this case, you're not gonna be actually walking your kid to school in this case. You're definitely gonna be hopping in your car because it is a little bit farther. So when we look at Eden Crest, which is right over here in this area, and then we have to actually take North Citrus, which is right over here, which will take you past that Ralph that I was just talking about on East Valley Parkway. So the Ralph's is on this side and then Vaughn's is over here on this side. You'll keep going passing Bear Valley. Bear Valley takes this way, which will go to Orange Glen High School in just one second. But if you go up to Citrus, there's a couple of different ways that you can get into Hidden Valley. So there are other ways that you can get there besides what we're showing here. But in this direction, this is going to be kind of the easiest way to go down North Centrist, going down to Reed, moving over, and then this is actually where you're going to find Hidden Valley Middle School. Hidden Valley Middle School, just like Glenview, you're going to be finding there's only two ways in. Okay, so this is the first way in coming down from North Citrus, or if you're coming, let's say from the freeway, the freeway on South Citrus will actually take you all the way down to the 15 freeway as well. Um, but if you're looking at South Citrus, you come down this direction, you will still come up here on Reed to be able to get to Hidden Valley. From your new home in new construction over here on Eden Crest, it's gonna take you, I would say about 10 minutes. And the only reason why I say 10 minutes instead of five minutes is because you're gonna end up hitting a little bit of traffic. When you pass here on North Citrus, you are going to end up finding the Orange Glen Elementary School that's right over here. Um, that's going to be the traffic spot. People typically do come here to Bear Valley to drop off their kid at Orange Glen. So you may end up hitting a little bit of traffic there. And then just in general, West Valley Parkway and East Valley Parkway are a pretty busy street. So you're going to end up finding that North Citrus traffic. And that's why I say it's going to take you about that 10 minutes to get your new middle school kid to school. You're looking over here at Reed and that's actually how you're going to get in. So the other thing that I was just talking about was how do you get the back road to the middle school? Well, when we're looking at right over here, we were just talking about the Orange Glen Middle School. Well, you could technically go North Citrus down this way and actually take Hayden to go up to Oak Hill and down to Faulkner and take yourself back to um, the middle school right over here. So I know that's a, a little bit more information that maybe you were even expecting, but you wanna be able to know that when you're running late, you're able to get your kid to school a little bit other differences versus just what Google's is actually showing you as to the map. So now let's hit up and look at the next school, which is going to be the high school. So the high school is actually gonna be Orange Glen High School. So we were just talking about Orange Glen Elementary, which is right over here. Orange Glen High School is right over here. So you're not gonna be traveling that much to school when it comes to buying your home in Eden Crest. Okay, so now looking at the Orange Glen High School, where your home is going to be located in comparison to where the new school is gonna be located, you're gonna be finding it's about seven to nine minutes. So again, take that with a grain of salt. You are definitely gonna be passing up a little bit of roads here to be able to get yourself over to the high school. And maybe by that point, your son or daughter is not actually having to have you drive them to school, but it may take them a little bit longer just because again, you're going down North Citrus to be able to take them all the way to Orange Glen High School. Orange Glen High School is gonna end up passing again. It'll pass Hidden Valley Middle School. So if you're taking North Citrus, this is gonna be a really busy spot to be able to take your kids to school. And so you just wanna make sure that you're aware that this is probably not the best route to get your kid to school and you will definitely never get there within seven minutes. So that's where Google in this case is gonna be wrong. You're definitely gonna to want to go a, the back route to be able to get there. And that's where you're gonna be able to find another direction to be able to take your kid to school. And that's gonna be from Eden Crest right over here. You're gonna be taking East Lincoln all the way down this way 
to be able to take the back route of over here to get to Glen Ridge, which is the other side of Orange Glen High School. So you're gonna be taking the back route this way to be able to take them down this way to be able to go over here on Bear Valley and then be over here taking out Glen Ridge to be able to get here to the high school. As you see, as we get closer, you're gonna find that to get to the school, it is a pretty big school. So there is a couple ways of being able to get into the school specifically. This way is actually another direction that you can actually end up dropping off your kid. It's like the back side of Orange Glen High School versus the front of the school, which is right over here. So you're trying to do that one way, or you can come down this direction like we were just talking about probably not going to be the best direction as to how to drop off your kids when it comes to just a little bit of the traffic and when you're running late. So now that we've looked at the schools and kind of where the freeway is, let's take a look as to where the homes are actually going to be located specifically. Remember what I said before that there's going to be 95 homes. So in a combination of single story and two stories. So in that we're going to be looking at kind of where they're actually broken down into. So remember when I said that they're going to be based off of El Norte, which is going to be this road right over here, right Right on the corner of Lincoln about a year or so ago they actually put the lights in that were right here so it actually made it a lot less traffic a lot less problems on that road one thing that you definitely want to be aware of is that right here on this corner to the right there is actually a spot that you cannot turn right on a red light so just make sure that because if you don't you're going to end up with yourself on a ticket <sighs> right at that corner um, and so when you're looking down here on East Lincoln it's going to take you right over here to the new construction so the new construction homes, these were actually homes that were built prior. These are not connected to Eden Crest. These homes right over here were actually built right off of this road, again, which is gonna be found off of El Norte, taking up Red Blush. This was actually a community that was built a couple of years ago based off of Honeybell. So when we look at the current Eden Crest community, that's gonna be right over here. So again, moving off of East Lincoln right here to the new homes that are being built right there. Here, you're gonna find that the homes were actually right over here. This is actually where all the avocado groves were, where they took those all down and now there's new homes being built. Then you move right over here, you're gonna find more homes right over here at the top and then right over here into the DG's nursery where you're gonna find even more homes that are located on this side. So you wanna be able to know that there is definitely gonna be a lot of options when it comes to homes. There's gonna be 95 of them, single and two story homes, but you wanna make sure that you're getting one, whether it's on the road and not too traffic oriented, you're not gonna to have too much traffic. Well, then you wanna make sure that you stay off of here and you go a little bit farther up and then maybe somewhere up here or somewhere over here in this area um, when it comes to the GG Nursery where those avocado groves used to be located. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit more about kind of like what to expect when it comes to the Eden Crest community. Because it is a complete build out, there is gonna be homeowners association dues. So the homeowners association dues, a lot of the time you think that they're only affiliated to condos or townhomes. That's not the case. You actually find HOA dues, which is homeowner association dues, pretty common actually here in Escondido. So right now they're saying that at complete build out, HOA dues on a monthly basis will be $169 being paid out to the Eden Crest community. So what does that mean be on the build out? So build out means that once they're done completely building all of the homes, then at that point it's gonna be at $169. So just kind of give you a little bit of perspective. When I first bought my home in 2007, the original HOA was not what it is today, which is $150. When I first bought the home, they weren't done with all of the many phases that they were completing. We had bought in phase one and therefore our HOA originally started at about 50 to $60 a month. That was when we were buying our home in phase one. Well, when they were done with all of the homes being built out, at that point, that's when the HOA dues went up to $150. They did not stay at the $150 though. At one point, they did actually increase to about $155 to $160 a month. Right now, they have taken them back down to $150. So keep that kind of in the back of your head is that it's not going to be guaranteed that they're going to stay at $169 at final build out. But what does the HOA actually cover? So when it comes to this community specifically, it's not going to cover any gas, electric, water, utility. It's not going to cover any of that stuff. It's only going to cover the maintenance and the community within Eden Crest. So kind of maintaining the grass, maintaining the parks that they end up building a park. Uh, maintaining that sorts of stuff, the actual community ground. So in my case, my HOA of $150 doesn't cover any of that stuff either. It just covers the grass in front of my house, not my specific grass. And then they maintain the park that is um, affiliated to my community. So 
There's also that to take into account that the 169 is there to make sure one that you have the community that stays as beautiful as it was originally built. Think about having that, you know, random pink house and there's nothing that you can do about it. Or if the house that is in your community just kind of got let go. <sighs> well, that I think is the really the pros to having an actual HOA is that you won't really have to worry about that. So when it came to like per se my HOA, you end up having the issue where you can't have a basketball court in front of your house. Oh. So like that basketball net you're not allowed to have. Well, you would think that, well, why do they care? Well, it changes the values and things like that. The other thing to keep in mind is that we also had, or I also had a neighbor that had a whole bunch of random cars in their driveway and they were like leaking a whole bunch of fluids out of the cars onto the road. And so that's the other reason why that is, you know, technically a pro to have an HOA because you have a governing party that's going to make sure that the community actually stays nice and pretty. So while some people go, I don't want to pay HOA, I actually like paying the HOA. My community is nice, it's well kept. You don't have to worry about those other randomness that is happening in other communities. And then you always end up being in a quiet area. Okay, so now let's talk about property taxes. So when it comes to Edencrest, Edencrest is saying that they're gonna have property taxes at 1.15% based off of 2019 and 2020, based off of the numbers. But keep in mind, they also have an annual special assessment. Annual special assessment is supposed to be about $900 to $1,100, depending on the square footage of your home. So obviously, let's say the larger the home, the more the special assessment that you'll end up paying for. If the smaller the home, then closer to that $900 that you're going to end up paying for. Keep in mind, though, at the County of San Diego, in general, you're going to end up finding property taxes that are about 1.25%. So if you're paying 1.15% and you're paying a little bit of special assessments, it's not going to be that big a deal because you're still gonna end up lower than the county average at 1.25%. Okay, so what else can you expect when it comes to the Eden Crest community? So first off, you're gonna to have to get pre-qualified. So they have a couple lenders that, th that you can get your pre-qualification done. It is actually a requirement. And just like any other lender, what they end up doing is that if you pre-qualify and you get their loan done from them, they end up getting you a little bit of closing costs to be paid for by the lender or by Eden Crest community. One thing to keep in mind though, that rates and costs as to monthly payments are kind of up in the air. Rates are changing everlasting. And depending on what kind of deal they are getting you, it may depend that what they're offering you may not be as well as what somebody else can offer you. So if you're thinking about making that move when it comes to here in Escondido, you definitely wanna reach out to us so we can help you make that move. When it comes to the monthly payments, the monthly payments are gonna be pretty much about the same. So when it comes to the total sales prices of the Arbor community and the Groves community that are located in Eden Crest, because again, the property taxes are gonna be relative, the HOA is gonna be exactly the same. Then you have your insurance for the fire insurance. And let's not forget that you're gonna have flood insurance most likely because the FEMA map is actually where this is all gonna come into. And so that's gonna be costing you a little bit more on a monthly basis. So it's just a little bit of stuff that you wanna make sure that you're aware of and be ready for when it comes to making that move into the Eden Crest community. The other thing that you wanna be aware of is that in order to reserve your home in the Eden Crest community, they're actually asking for a 3% of the sales price to be able to take that home off the market or basically not sell it to somebody else, even though technically speaking, it hasn't actually been built yet. But in order for you to reserve that home, that lot to get built for you, you have to put 3% down. So let's say for example, $600,000. 3% of $600,000 is $18,000. So you have to put $18,000 to reserve your home. And then basically you're gonna stop shopping at that point. One of the other things that you definitely wanna be aware of is that if you want to have any of the extra amenities or any extra upgrades, they are asking for additional deposits for those extra upgrades. And that's basically because they're gonna be putting it inside the home. And so if you walk away, they're gonna most likely keep that money to be able to cover that expenses. Because if you don't buy it, somebody else is going to, and what if they don't wanna pay that amount and then the builder is now losing out on that money. Okay, so now let's talk about floor plans. So in the Arbor's floor plan, there is three different floor plans that you can actually obtain. So prices start right around $700,000. Remember, price in general is relative because you wanna make sure that you understand that just because it starts at $700,000 does not mean you're gonna end at $700,000. So when you look at the single stories on Arbors, you're gonna be looking at starting point at about $700,000, 
which is the high of 700,000, all the way up to about the low of $800,000. This is gonna be for three different floor plans when it comes to the Arbor's community. You're gonna be looking at square footage anywhere between 2,496 square feet to north about 3,399 square feet with the middle one on the second community at 2,747 square feet. So you definitely have a little bit of a variance. Those are the single stories that we're talking about right now. Keep in mind that depending on your upgrades, that price that starts at that high 700s can get pretty pricey. One of the things that just to put in the back of your head, when I first bought my home, the floor alone was like $20,000. <gasps> I mean, so one of the things that you wanna make sure that when you start upgrading your home is that you don't upgrade it too much because Flooring doesn't really increase your home value. And it doesn't increase the home value based off the $20,000 that I've spent on my flooring. And so you wanna make sure that the money that you do spend for those upgrades, it does actually make sense, meaning that you're gonna get your per square foot back. Of course, in general, you're not gonna be buying and then selling like in within 30 days or within you know the first couple of years. This is not a buy flip kind of market, but it's just something that to be aware of. So now let's talk about the next community, which is gonna be the Grove. These are the uh, two-story communities. Again, they have three different floor plans, also ranging in the higher numbers, also ranging in the mid 800,000s to the high 800,000s. So in these communities, remember that this is the two-story that you're gonna be looking at. So in the two-story homes, Again, the difference between three different floor plans. So the first floor plan is gonna be at 3,100 square feet. And then the second floor plan is gonna be at 3,601 square feet. And then the last floor plan is gonna be at 4,043 square feet. So again, these homes, when it comes to the Groves community, are gonna be a little bit larger on the square footage. And in general, they're also gonna be on higher price with the mid to the high $800,000. So when you're thinking about new construction, when it comes to Escondido, you definitely want to get all of your information because with prices starting at the high 700,000s up to the mid 800,000s, whether it's the Arbors or the Groves community, maybe that's the spot for you. Or maybe you just wanna buy a regular home that was being sold by a seller, vice versa, a builder. So when you're ready to make that move, you definitely wanna reach out to us. Give us a call, send us a text or an email, whatever is easiest for you, because definitely we got your back when moving to San Diego or in the new construction Escondido community. And don't forget, we release videos every single week. So make sure that you click that subscribe button and tap that little bell so you're reminded every single week that we release new videos, because we're talking about what it's like to eat, live, sleep, and play here in Escondido, San Diego, and of course, in many other cities. And until next time, we'll see you later.